Right, well, g'day everyone, and welcome to Explore Reeks. I've been absolutely dying to bring this series to you, and uh, it's now going to be live on our YouTube channel. So, first of all, we're going to do the 76, followed by a couple of the other trucks that are on the series, and then we're going to bring you some of the toughest rigs out there exploring Australia at the moment. But we're going to kick it off with uh, my Land Cruiser. So here we go. It's a 2010 Toyota Land Cruiser 76 series. A uh, little bit of history, I bought it back in uh, January 2017. The idea was to try and have a bog stock, um, brand new ground up build. So I had a car that was basically finished, a Nissan Patrol. I sold that, went to the Land Cruiser and uh, started from scratch. All right, so let's kick it off with the outside of the truck. Now, of course, up front, we've got protection. So I'm running the ARB Big Tube Deluxe Bull Bar running into the scrub bars and side steps. Now underneath, that's got the custom off-road uh, stainless steel bash plate, which pretty much covers me from all front on impacts, underneath impacts, and then of course the brush bars on the side. On the bull bar itself, down the bottom, I'm running a nine and a half thousand pound worn carbon winch. Then we've got lighting. Now I've gone with the ARB intensities on the front and matched them with the intensity light bars up top. We do a lot of uh, long kilometers at night time. Good lighting is uh, an absolute must. So I'm stoked with the setup I've got there. Now also on the front of the bull bar is my Oricom aerial, which ties into my two-way system inside the truck. All right, so moving down the side of the vehicle, I'm running the Safari four inch R-Max unit, which gives me all the airflow in the world to the motor, get more to performance in a minute. Uh, as we move to the back of the vehicle, I'm running an Outback Safari, uh, I think it is, Outback Accessories bar work, somewhere from up in Townsville. Now, I do have two swing arms at the moment. I'm only running one, which holds my spare tire, and of course, four Max Tracks. I wouldn't leave home without them. They pretty much stay on the back of my vehicle. I do have a secondary swing arm, but to be quite honest, I get sick of having to open two rear tires to access my doors, so I opt for the one spare. All right, so moving on top of the vehicle, I've gone for the Bush Company rooftop tent and awning. Firstly, the awning. Now, it's a 270 degree awning, wraps all the way around the back of the vehicle, which means it's great for a quick lunch side, lunch side stop, or if it's pouring rain, I'm still able to get to everything in the back without getting wet. Okay, so moving on to the rooftop tent. Now, not only is it extremely comfortable, gets me off the ground, out of the dirt, and keeps me dry from all elements, but it's got a few luxuries. I've got a couple of outlets up there for charging my phone and laptop. I've got plenty of lighting in there. The rain fly is absolutely awesome. If it is raining, I can still have the windows down for that nice cool breeze. Another added bonus with the rooftop tent is I can put roof racks or solar panels up on top without any dramas. So that's gotta be one of my favorite modifications. All right, here we go, under the bonnet. Uh, firstly, we'll kick it off with performance. So uh, my style of touring is uh, I carry a lot of gear. I also like to tow the occasional camper trailer boat uh, around with me as well. So I needed that extra performance, but I still wanted it to be extremely reliable. We do a lot of uh, remote touring. I'm not chasing huge horsepower. It's not a race car, but I do have good, reliable performance. So uh, it's all managed by my Safari R-Max ECU unit. Um, starting with the four inch Safari snorkel. I'm still running the standard air box. I do that because I like, I like having the paper filters. They're extremely easy to carry, swap them over, dust them out on the uh, corrugated roads when I'm picking up a lot of dust, just basically for convenience. Moving up top, I've got the Legend X uh, aftermarket top mount intercooler, keeping everything nice and cool. Getting the heat out the back, I've got the Safari three inch stainless steel exhaust. Uh, tucked behind there, I'm also running the crossover pipe. Turbo, it's been upgraded. I'm running a Garrett High Flow from uh, MTQ. Now, basically all these aftermarket modifications are looked after by my Safari ECU unit. Everything works together and I'm absolutely stoked with the performance. So numbers wise, we're doing 171 kilowatt, uh, so 230 horsepower. That is on 35 inch tires uh, at the rear wheels on the dyno. So um, good, reliable horsepower. 
Now, what else we got under here? I'm running the ARB compressor. This takes care of um, pumping up my tires and also activates the uh, front and rear air lockers. Dual battery system. Under the bonnet, I'm running a secondary AGM battery looked after by the Red Arc isolator. That takes care of my center console fridge, which you'll see a little bit later on, and a few other small accessories. That's about all that battery does. Everything else is taken care of by my other management system, which you'll see shortly. Um, I've got a couple of diff breathers snuck in here, uh, just because I do a lot of water crossings, get the breathers up nice and high. I've got the aftermarket um, HPD catch can, and that's probably about it for under the bonnet. Sorry, one last thing would be the upgraded J-Max brake booster. Now that gives me about 30% better braking with all the extra weight that I've added to the car. Uh, that, that is definitely an upgrade I'd recommend. As soon as you're heavier, faster, you need to be able to stop. So that just about covers under the bonnet. Moving on to inside the truck. All right, moving inside the vehicle up front, the cockpit. Now, I guess uh, one of the biggest improvements, Land Cruisers look extremely basic and boring inside with one cup holder. So I've gone for an aftermarket console, cruiser consoles, and that's teamed up with the Waco 12 litre fridge. Now, always being on the road and touring, I do a bucket load of kilometres. Having water cold, nice and handy uh, is definitely, it's definitely one of my favourite features. This picks up some nice easy cup holders as well. And then the rest of the center console really does just tidy the up the interior. I've got a couple of extra outlets there for charging my phones and uh, plugging other bits and pieces into it. Now, moving up top, I've got the cruiser console's roof console. Once again, storage on the road. My side, her side, you can put all your little bits and pieces. There's also a couple of outlets up inside here that you can't see for charging phones and that sort of thing. I've got the Oricom UHF uh, up top, nice and easy access. And then of course, to look after all of my management system, which I'll move into shortly, I've got the Red Arc Manager 30 display right above my head, easy access, and I can keep an eye on my battery levels uh, at all times while driving. Now I've got the Lynx system tucked away in the right hand corner. That gives me a variety of different functions. Mainly I run it uh, as a speed on the display, just because I'm running the bigger tires. I've got a ECU, uh, I guess you'd call it a management screen. Now this is plugged into your uh, auxiliary port that tells me what engine codes it might come up with. I can also set different reminders for servicing and uh, a variety of other features. That's from the ECU shop. Uh, Dash organizers, once again, when you're on the road, everything needs its own little spot, so it's not a mess. So his and her dash organizers just gives you uh, that little bit of extra storage. Other than that, that's basically the cockpit. Okay, moving on to the back seats or lack thereof. Now, the 76 isn't exactly renowned for storage, so when I'm not cruising around town, the back seats come out. I've got a custom made false floor that's super easy to uh, put in and remove, which links up to my custom built drawer system. You'll see more of that in a minute. Now, on the backs, on the false floor, I've got a secondary fridge, 50 litre Waco. This one is either uh, used as my beer fridge or freezer for those longer trips. I've got my ARB recovery kit uh, nice and easily tucked away there. Underneath that is a uh, first aid kit, always important to carry one. Now this section here in the back of the drawers was designed for a built-in water tank. At the moment, I'm still just running a 20 litre jerry can with a stainless hose. That's my water usage. It works perfectly so far. Now on the other side, um, I've got my battery management system. So I'm running the Red Arc Manager 30. It takes care of all of my 12 volt needs. That's powered by 210 amp hour lead crystal batteries. Um, I've got a couple of storage boxes there from the Bush Company, just black boxes, just keep stuff from rolling around, mostly the items I don't use all the time, along with just a couple of rear seat organizers for tucking away uh, handy bits and pieces. That is basically the back seat. All right, moving to the back of the truck. Now, when you don't have a lot of room, you need to make sure you utilize absolutely every bit of space you've got. So 
The guys at Cruiser Customs built me a fully customizable drawer system to suit my needs. Now, uh, the heart of it, I guess, is my, f my first fridge. It's the 50 liter Waco slide out uh, at a nice low level. I didn't want it sitting up too high. So the fridge slides out and then I've got a workbench that slides out uh, from underneath the fridge. I've got a three stacker drawer system. Uh, they're all slightly different sizes. The main one for all your pots and pans, other bits and pieces. And then the top drawer is essentially my pantry uh, with all my cutlery and uh, bits and pieces. Each side has got a little compartment. So this right hand side is completely enclosed. I keep um, things that I don't need to get to all the time, some charging equipment and a few other bits and pieces. On the left hand side, I keep uh, my toolkit, some spare parts, air filters, uh, oil filters. I've got a hammer and a few other bits and pieces. Now up on top of the drawer systems, I've got uh, a shelf with my table and chair set underneath it. I've got a spot for my barbecue on the left hand side. And then I've also got my Red Arc uh, 12,000 watt Synwave inverter up there. Nice easy access for 240 volt power when I'm using coffee machines, uh, charging my laptop, all that sort of thing. So the basic gist is everything has got its spot. This works for me. Uh, I couldn't be happy with the rear drawer setup. All right, well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough on my 76 Learn Cruiser. If you liked the video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe because coming up, we've got Berkey's Nissan Patrol, Lane's Animal of an 80, and of course, Simon's Touring Triton. Now, along with those boys, we're gonna have a bucket load of other exploring rigs from all around of Australia. So, make sure you subscribe. See you next time on Explore Rigs. <laughs>